Six degrees north of the equator, in the heart of the East Indies, lies Sandakan, the tiny capital of British North Borneo. In Sandakan in 1941, there were 15,000 Asiatics, 79 Europeans, and one American. I was the American. My name is Agnes Keith. I was born in Oak Park, Illinois, and graduated from the University of California at Berkeley. My husband is Harry Keith, a colonial official of British North Borneo. Borneo became my home when Harry and I were married. And it was in Sandakan that I bore one child and lost another. And it was in Sandakan that we waited, 45 white men, 24 wives, and 11 children, through the anxious days of 1940 and 41, certain only of one thing, that sooner or later, Japanese guns would join in the thunders of war, and Japanese troops would come down through the East Indies. The men waited because it was their duty, the women because it was their choice. What's he doing? Teasing that ape? Oh, no, Doctor. They're much friends now. Is Mrs. Keith in? Yes, Doctor. Will you tell her I'm here? Yes, Doctor. How are you feeling, young fella? Fine, Dr. Bandy. Had any fight yet? Yes, sir. That's a good lad. How big was he? Wasn't a boy. No, oh, you can't start too early at that sort of thing. What did you do? Walloper? I ran her all the way home. Splendid, Georgie. And then her brother ran me all the way back. The filthy bully. Trying to corrupt him again, are you? <laughs> Not in the least. Boys got to learn to protect himself against women. <laughs> Inside, darling. It's time to get washed up for luncheon. Come on, Mr. Grouch. Bye, Dr. Bandy. <laughs> Bye, young fella. Trip her up next time. Well, what's the verdict? Which would you like? A girl or another boy? Then it's definite. How do you feel? All right? Well, mornings, you know. <laughs> Perfectly normal. Nothing to be done about that. Drop into the office the first time you're downtown and we'll go into details. How's Harry feel about it? I haven't told him yet, no, thank you. I wanted to wait until it was definite. You weren't afraid, were you? Afraid of what? Afraid to tell him. Well, of course not. Why should I be? Situation, I mean, the war and all that. Oh. Do you really think they'll come? I'm afraid I do, eventually. I can't believe it. I, I really can't. <laughs> I hope not, of course, but I think we ought to be prepared for it anyway. But how? How can you prepare for it? Well, I'm really ashamed to think of what I might do if they came. No, the Japs were to come here, probably have to drag me down out of those hills. I know that's where they'll find me. Oh, no. You won't be here anyway. The government will clear out all you women and children. That gives me an idea. I played Charlie and Charlie's aunt a couple of years ago. I wonder what I did with that dress. <laughs> That's what I'll do this very night, by George. I'll dig up that dress and try it on. <laughs> Goodbye, Agnes. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you. How'd you like to take a little trip, darling? Trip where? Home, back to the States, you and Georgie. Are you beginning to worry, too? No, not altogether, but... It is liable to get a little rough out here. No need taking too many chances, you know. No, I don't want to go. I don't want to leave you. I want to be with you whatever happens. What about Georgie? We'll have to send him out, I guess. But I've made up my mind about myself. I'm sticking with Papa. No matter what Papa thinks? No matter whatever. What about the government? Would you listen to it? Oh, if the government puts me out, then I'll have to go, but not otherwise. All right, then we'll leave it up to the government. You know, I never knew before that you were a woman of steel. Oh, I'm not. I'm a woman of tinfoil. I'm scared to death already. You're just my bill, I guess. Name happens to be Harry. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. Just my Harry, I meant. You have very nice hands, darling. Still? Always. Shall we go in? 
uh, Ah Yin tells me Doc Bandy was here this morning. Anything wrong? Uh, no, no, I, I just wanted him to look at George's throat. Newsflash, newsflash. We interrupt this program to tell you that the Japanese have attacked the American naval base at Pearl Harbor in the Hawaiian Islands. This is all the information we have at the moment. And then we waited. For five weeks from that December morning, we waited for the voice of command and authority to give us our orders. On January 11th, we got them. To all British subjects in the state of North Borneo, the enemy occupied Jesselton this morning and may be expected in Sandakan at any hour now. You'll be doing your duty by remaining at your posts. Meet the enemy, resist passively, do not cooperate. We are sorry, but we cannot help you. Nice life they picked for it, too. Very inconsiderate people. Two four seven, please. Hello? Did you have the radio on? Yes, I heard it. Is there any sign of him yet? No, but we have a guard on the point to let us know. No need to worry too much yet. It may all be very simple and routine. We're going down to the dock to show them that we're not armed. You're to take Georgie straight to Government House. All the women and children are to gather there and stay under orders until we know what's what. You understand? Yes, I'm packing now. But when will I see you? I'll catch up with you later. I'm trying not to worry, dear. I, I know everything's going to be all right. How's Georgie? Has he noticed anything yet? No. He's a little angel. Very pleased to be up so late. Give him a big hug for me and tell him I'm counting on him to help his mummy. All right, darling. Harry, listen. Be very careful, will you? And don't worry, dear. I won't do anything foolish. And I'll see you a little later. Bye, darling. Not yet, but any minute now, I guess. What do you think they do, Missy? I don't know, Ian. I don't even like to think about it. What about your friends? Very good friends. When time comes, they take me away to the hills. No one find me. Come here, darling. We get motor launches, but the boy couldn't tell how many. Doesn't matter. Ten hundred, ten thousand makes no difference. Should we start, gentlemen? Might as well. Do the honors properly.
I'd put my wristwatch away if I were you. Oh, thank you. I intended to. What? What is it, Mommy? What was that bird? You have to be quiet, darling. But what was it? <laughs> おい、ここはラクダな。うん、シンガポートはダブ違うな。チャールズ、チャールズ。なんだこれは何かの介護か君、どうでもせい。何をしているのか。I'm when Japanese officer enter, stand up, everybody, and bow to officer. Bow, bow to Japanese officer. And why isn't there any petrol here? We dumped it. Those were my orders and I obeyed them. Precisely as you obey yours. What do you mean orders? You are not a soldier. You are a civilian. You told me so yourself. I'm a civilian, but I'm also an official, subject to the orders of my government. And what else did you destroy? Certain pieces of machinery, some boats, a few bridges. And your stocks of oil too, I suppose? All of it. And you still expect to be treated as a civilian? I had my orders. You had your orders from a general in Singapore, and there were military orders. You have probably committed 40 acts of war in the past 24 hours, and yet you stand there and try to tell me you are a civilian, that we are all civilians, so that it doesn't count. What do you take me for? A complete fool? The rules of war defining a civilian and civilian rights are perfectly clear. And I'm sure you're quite familiar with them. I'm asking for nothing that I'm not entitled to. And if I may say... Never use that voice to me again. Oh, wait a minute. You have absolutely no right. Perhaps you had better understand this now. At the very beginning. I'll take none of your British arrogance. None of it. We are in charge here now, the Nipponese army. You understand that? Now, bow to Japanese officers. Bow! Mrs. Keys? Yes. Mrs. Agnes Newton Keys? Yes. Other people, go your home. Stay your home. Mrs. Keys, you come with me. No, no, baby. You come along. Oh, no, I won't leave him. I can't leave him here alone. Leave him. Soldier, take care. Good soldier, take care. I won't leave him. He's too small to be left alone. I'll take him home with me. Is that all right? Anybody take him all right. You come quick with me. He'll be all right. Don't worry. Mm. No, darling, no, be a good boy. Mommy will be home right away. Come on. Mrs. Keith. Coming. Sit down, Mrs. Keith. You have a child, haven't you? 
Yes? His son, George. Where is he? I left him with a friend. The lieutenant wouldn't let me bring him in. I have two sons. Really? Two sons and a daughter. How old is he, a boy? He's four. My youngest is three, but he's quite big for three. People often take him for four. Really? You'd have to bring your little boy to see me sometime. I'll tell him about Japan, how little boys live there. And I have some pictures, too. I'll show him. That will be over soon. They are just cleaning up a bit. I read your book about Borneo, Mrs. Keith, the land below the wind. You did? In the Japanese edition. I like it very much. Thank you. You were very sympathetic with Orientals. Of course. I've lived out here for several years now. I've come to know them quite well. It's not usual, you know. Where is your home in the States, Mrs. Keith? California. I lived in America for four years. I went to the University of Washington. I was at Berkeley. I went out to Berkeley, too, many years ago, for a football game. You murdered us. She got it. Thank you. And we were the favorites, too. I took even money and gave a triple point to one fellow. Well, that's too bad. You should have put your money on the crew. That's right. We had always good crews. Have we a copy of your book here, Mrs. Keith? The American edition? Yes. I would like very much to have an autograph. Well, I, I don't see how you could have picked a better time to ask for one. I'm sorry. You think it's too impolite this way? Oh, not at all. I don't get enough requests for my autograph. To quibble over the circumstances. And would you also mind writing in it that you gave it to me personally? Certainly. I uh, appreciate that very much. I'll write the name for you. Michio Suga. Honor Michio Suga. I think I'll read it again, too. Is that all? That's all. Colonel. Yes? May I ask you something about the man, my husband? What are you going to do with him? That will be attended to in time. Goodbye. occupation by the enemy. Business as usual, they said. Carry on with your lives and your work. At the end of one month of such civilized consideration, I no longer had my secret. I think she'll be all right now. If she wakes up during the night, give her another tablet. I'll ring you in the morning. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Good night, Georgie. Good night, Dr. Mandy. Good night, Harry. Good night, Doctor. too much on, on top of everything else. I couldn't. My poor darling. Maybe it's just as well. One less problem to handle. What is it, Mommy? I'm afraid we're not going to have a little baby brother after all. What about a little baby sister? sister either. Next Christmas, maybe? I'm afraid not, darling. 
for a while. It'll have to be just us, that's all. You and Daddy and me. That's all right, Mommy. I didn't want anybody else anyway. Oh, my baby. Any sign of the truck yet? Come soon. We'll be out here on the veranda. Okay. You use this? Yes, thanks. Still got a few more minutes, even if they're on time, which they probably won't be. Sit here. Oh, darling, darling. Oh, no, no. Have you heard anything at all, where we're going? Nothing that means anything. If only they make some kind of provision for children. He's pretty sturdy. That's one good thing. But he's still so little. I know, dear. I know. Everybody is. I'm scared to be without you. I, I need you so. I just won't know what to do without you. What's the matter with Mommy? <laughs> Mommy's all right. She just doesn't feel very well. that Yankee spirit. Isso, Oksan, toda uma história. Hiro, Oksan, toda uma história. one you can give me. <sighs> Goodbye, son. Bye. You're going away with Mummy for a little while. Don't forget Daddy, will you? Lady? We're going. Very sorry. Thank you. Just listen to what Mummy tells you and stick close to her at all times. Yes, Daddy. And wait here a moment. We'll all go out together. Can you handle all that? Yes, I think so.
Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Daddy. Oi, oi, hi, please. Let's go. This was Berhala Island, where for nine months the white women and children of Sandakan were grounded in the filth and hunger and degradation that were to be theirs throughout their imprisonment under the Japanese. And here we began to know for the first time the cruelest of all suffering that war brings to women. Emptiness. The gnawing, lonely, hopeless emptiness of life without love. At Berhala, we knew it twofold because our men were nearby. Only a few hundred yards down the road in their own compound. And now and then we could see them, a glimpse anyway, on their way to or from their work in the fields. And now and then, if one were willing to run the risk of a beating, Sorry. How 
with me. Still a little feverish. Did you sleep at all, darling? Never. Good. You're going, aren't you? I want to. If George is all right. You must. I'll take care of George. He'll be all right. Betty, he looks so sick. You don't look any too well yourself. Oh, I'm all right. Considering those rubber vegetables we had last night. If you go, will you ask him about Jock? Of course. And Robbie. I'll ask about everybody. But don't tell him about Joyce, will you? Tell him she's getting along all right. Do you think you could give him a message for Freddie? Yes, of course. But would you tell him to tell Freddie that my cough is a great deal better? He worries so, you know. I'll tell him. And Joe, too, don't forget. I saw him on the road the other day. He looks so thin. I'll make a list this evening of all the messages, and I'll bring back the news for everybody. Greetings for everybody, too, I suppose. We were not speaking to you, if you don't mind. Perhaps not, but you're proposing something that's likely to get us all in trouble. You know very well, if she were caught, the whole camp would be punished. Will you keep your voice down? I'll tell her to go jump in the ocean. Agnes hasn't even spoken to her husband for five months. And if she's got a chance to be with him for a few minutes now, I think she ought to grab it like a shot. Doesn't matter what happens to the rest of us, I suppose. She's not going to get caught. Others have done it and got away with it. I do not care to be beaten because some disgusting woman cannot do without a husband for a few months. I wish I could tell you what I think of you for that. Why can't you keep your big mouth shut? You make more noise and more trouble than any other five women in the camp. Every time one of you women sneak through that fence, you endanger every other person in this camp. And I refuse to be quiet about it. All right, then. Why don't you go and tell the sergeant now? Sure, and why don't you give him a great big kiss while you're about it? I have no intention of doing anything more than my duty. Here he is now. Tell him why, don't you? Well, if it isn't old frog face. Betty. Oh, that's right, you haven't met this one yet. The sergeant doesn't understand one word of English, do you, Repulsive? Mm, <laughs> oh, now, you cute little bucket of swill. Koronaka? <laughs> Isn't he a stinker? Oh, yes, indeed. You can tell that even from this distance. Are you sure it's all right? Certainly. Oh, Henrietta. I'm not interested, thank you. Haven't you something to tell our little garbage blossom? I'll take no part in this insanity, no part whatever. Hey, Sarge, you see that woman over there? Mrs. Henrietta Tattletail Thomas. Well, that woman sneaks out of the camp every single night and meets Tojo. Tojo? Tojo. Under the palm trees. Mrs. Summers. これは馬鹿にしてるのか。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Of 
burning up. You sure you can make it? I've got to make it. Don't you think you'd better try another night? No, it's got to be tonight. He'll be waiting for me. But he'd understand, darling. I've got all those messages, too. I can't disappoint everybody. I'm sick. <laughs> I 
very sick. Georgie, darling. Oh, dear God. Sister Rose, what can we do? What is it, you think? Malaria, probably. He's burning up. We'll have to call the captain of the guard. Oh, this child's terribly sick. We can't until Agnes gets back. Can I help? Have you any quinine? Why? No, I, I haven't. I'm sorry. Isn't there something we can do just till she gets back? Go to the captain and ask him for some quinine. Some in your hand. You don't have to tell him whom it's for. That's it. I'll just say it's for one of the children. And hurry, will you? One. I want some quinine, Captain. Quinine. One of the children is ill. Doctor, give you quinine. You'll see doctor tomorrow. But he needs it now, Captain. He's very ill. You, Mrs. Summers? Yes. You know have a child. Who is the child? Mrs. Keese. Why not she come? Why you come? She's ill, too. I know have quinine. See doctor tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late, Captain. Can't you send me to the doctor for some now? It's not far, and they're very ill. Ill like die? They are, truly. We go see how ill. No. Must see first. Must not wait, doctor, unless very ill. But that's not at all necessary. You don't have to go to all that trouble. Really. But ill like die, you say? Yes, they are, but you don't have to go. You can send me. I'll explain to the doctor. I go with you. Directly to the doctor. Please don't go in there, Captain. It would upset them very much. They'd be very frightened. Don't go in, please. We go see. I get doctor. He had plenty quinine. children, we'll be transferred from this camp this afternoon. Must be ready to o'clock. Be careful, keep up good spirit and moral. Where to? We had our 
our choice of three rumors to a wonderful new camp with electric lights and beds to be repatriated to the officers' brothels. All we knew for certain was that the men were not being transferred with us. Japanese kind of people. Wives can say goodbye husband, but no kissing, see? Must not kiss. Now make snappy, please. Come away. Oh, Georgie, my, what you've grown. You really have. How are you feeling? I'm hungry, Daddy. Oh, no, no, darling. You can't be. You've just eaten. No, he's not doing badly at all. Now, you mustn't worry about that for a How minute. How are you, darling? We were both quite sick for a while, but we're fine now. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, absolutely, darling. They treated us very well, really. Do, do, do you have any idea where you're going? No. Well, perhaps you'll go to one of the big camps. You'll have it better there. I have a little going away gift for you. For me too, Daddy? Mm -hmm. For both of you. Be careful. Don't let the guards see. Don't look for much. You know, there isn't much chance to shop around here. Thank you, sweetheart. Whatever it is, we need it. Did you get the eggs? Yes, darling. Where did you get them? From the little man at the dock. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> now, don't cry. Smile at me. I can't help. Did you get the quinine? No, I didn't. Did you send someone? We needed I it tried. so badly. His legs. Say hello to the baby. Yeah. We don't know where. Oh, look what daddy's been. Hello, Hello, baby. Where are you going to go? I don't know, darling. You don't... don't you get any messages? Don't worry. Are you over the malaria? Yes, darling. I'm fine. Tony, <laughs> is Freddie ill or something? I thought you knew. Freddie was sent away last week. No. No, I didn't. Please, I can't bear I'm not, I'm not brave about it. I can't bear it. Have you heard anything about yourself? Oh, I'll be all right. Got to have someone do the work, you know. Are you eating? You, you look so thin. I was getting a little fat, remember? Oh, no, you weren't. Be careful, darling. You fall. I don't care. Oh, don't cry. I had eggs when I was sick, Daddy. Eggs? Why, you little monkey. No wonder you're growing up living off the fat of the land. Justin! Say goodbye, please. Must go now. Give me. Give me a chance. It's not much of a way to say goodbye. It won't be for long. We'll see each other again soon. Goodbye, son. No, Daddy. Be very careful, darling. Take last look, babies. Maybe goodbye for a long time. Okay. They're going to kill him. It's the last time I'll ever see him. They're going to kill him, and he knows it. I'll never see him anymore. present now? I think so. Wasn't this nice of Daddy? With their handkerchiefs. Is that all? Oh, but aren't they pretty? Look, that's mosquito netting. Now, wasn't that clever of Daddy? You mean Daddy made this himself? Yes. He's becoming quite a seamstress, isn't he? Ours. He is you and I that must live. Although our bodies may die, I know there's something between us that will never die.
These ten days at sea, bound for we knew not where, were, I believe, the worst. and children should still be possible. What hope was there for such an animal? This was it, Kuching, the great dump heap of prisoners in the East Indies. And this was the women's camp, isolated and segregated from the many men's camps that were scattered among the hills around us. First thing we heard at Kuching. Four, well, that's ten more years. Then we heard it again. Four, well, that's ten more years. Again and again and again. But by then we knew that while the war might, we wouldn't. Not on one cupful of thin rice gruel, five tablespoons of cooked rice, occasionally a bit of green, and tea, once a day. Not through the long days of work beyond our staff strength. Perhaps not through the occasional cruelty. Stick out tongue, quick. <laughs> Not even with now and then little acts of kindness. For you and son. Thank you, Doctor. So in the course of time, life was reduced to one simple, stubborn purpose to keep alive. <laughs> to avoid punishments and beatings, the ladies should presume themselves to endeavor with passive behavior, not negative. Lieutenant Nakata. The lieutenant must have learned his English at Harvard. Mrs. Keith, you please bathe and put on a dress and report to Lieutenant Nakara's office with your child as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Quickly as possible. <laughs> Hurry, please. Hey. Mrs. Keith. Come in, please. How do you do, Mrs. Keys? This is a great pleasure. How do you do, Colonel? Well, I'm afraid I'm your jailer again. So I see. Yes, I'm now in command of all the prison camps in coaching. I suppose I should congratulate you. Thank you. And this is George, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Oh, he's a big boy. How are you, young man? How do you feel? I'm hungry. Oh, really? Well, you'll have to do something about that. Can't have nice little boys like you going around hungry. You know, Lieutenant Nakata, you are camp commander, I suppose. Uh, Mrs. Keith is a very celebrated writer in America. I have read her book myself personally. You know, Mrs. Keith. Have a cigarette? Thank you. Uh, keep the package. Are you quite sure you can spare them? Don't mention it. I have something of a surprise for you. Where on earth did you get it? Out of your house. 
haven't forgotten you, I promise, have you? No, no. Australian prisoners. Why do the Australians always seem to be just a little more aggressive than necessary? Uh -huh. To Colonel Michio Suga, a lover of beautiful letters, Agnes Newton Keith. You're really too kind, Mrs. Keith. Not at all. <laughs> That'll be all now. Thank you. Uh, ah. Quickly, please, quickly. <clears throat> well, that was about the quickest literary tea I ever saw. Hey, outside, outside. All right. Okay. Thanks. A miracle happened. I beat Mrs. Gulliver to the garbage tonight. What did you get? That's a bit of pineapple, I believe. I don't know what that is, but it's quite good. Potato top, isn't it? Is it? Aren't you having any? No, I've had buckets of it. That's for you. Go right ahead. I wonder if I should wake him. No, don't. I have a piece of banana for him. Let him sleep now and give it this in the morning. Oh, you're a darling, Betty. What would you say this was? Is there a bone in it? No, yes. Yes, a flat bone. Did you find a fish? Oh, no, the head. That's what it is, a fish head. Mm. It couldn't taste better, really. Oh, it isn't the cooking in particular. I just wash the stuff and dump it in the pot. I don't even know what some of it is sometimes. Most of it I recognize, of course. What some of it is, I simply can't imagine. It's all food, isn't it? That's it. I don't know what George and I would have done with it. What's that? Well, it's not an owl, I can tell you that. Do it, do it, do. That's even worse. Right at the bottom of the fence. Look. It's the Australians. Right, lady. Oh, cut it out, fellas. There's a guard out front. You'll get us in trouble. Oh, tell me again, lady. Tell me again. I just want to hear you talk. You get out of here. Did you hear that, Sarge? That one's for me. Come on down here, lady. Let's take a look at you. Please, fellas. If the guard hears you, we'll really be in trouble. They'll cut our rations again. Listen, sister. We ain't even talked to a dame in months. That guard don't bother us. Uh, you don't have to worry about him. If he sticks his nose in here, we'll slit his ruddy throat. You come down here, Tootsie, and I'll give you a lipstick. <laughs> I wouldn't interest you, really. I'm much too old, much too tough for you. How old? Sixty. Sixty? Well, what's the matter with sixty? I thought you meant about a hundred or something. What's this? Who are they? It's the Australian. What about the other one? How old are you? Just me? Yes, yeah, not that it matters, but how old are you? Oh, I'm nearly seventeen now. What? I said I'm nearly 70 now. 70? What have we got ourselves into? The old lady's home? Ah, <laughs> oh, they're kidding us. They sound like a couple of babes to me, both of them. Hey, how about some of those lipsticks down here? Okay, baby. Any time you want to come down and pick them up. Oh, no. Boys, now look. Now look, I'm terribly sorry, but this is really too dangerous. Now go away. You try to run out on us, we'll throw a couple of rocks through your window. Oh, come on. We've had a rough time of it, lady. We need a little relaxation. Well, if we stay here, will you behave? Behave? Lady, we're behind a barbed wire fence. <laughs> Look, Sarge, thousands of them. And us without a wire cutter. As far as the eye can see, nothing but dames. Come on down here, lady. Come on down, Tootsie, I'll give you a lipstick. Hey, wait. There. Can't you smell it now? Oh, nuts. I can't smell anything. It's perfume, I tell you. Ladies' perfume. Come on. Come on. Hey, everyone down here. Come on. 
Betty, this is awful. I'm scared to death. Hey, you got lipsticks too? Loaded with a beauty pie. You want one? Sure, throw me one. Here's two. Come and get them. Go on, get them. Why you go sure, with me? me no, don't do that. Here's two for you too, sister. Come on. This is for me. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, I think we could get over this trap. Yeah, why not? Oh, don't you do that, you'll get killed. Why not us, lady. We've been sentenced to death twice already. Both of us. We want they say eternal. Betty, can't you think of anything? Look, fellas, aren't you married? Haven't you got wives back home? No, strictly bachelors, both of us. You don't think we'd go calling on strange ladies if we was married, do you? You're making all this trouble for nothing because we're not going to have anything to do with you. And besides, we're missionaries. Missionaries? Both of us. I wouldn't mind being converted tonight. Me neither. <laughs> had passed since Harry and I had said goodbye to each other across the ditch in Berhalla. Nearly two years of wondering if he still lived or not. Nobody could tell me. Nobody seemed to know. Alice knew about Frank. He had been beheaded. A god told her. And Cecily knew about Larry. They had taken her to see his poor thin body. His hair had turned white. But George and I didn't know. That's why our eyes were always on the road that led from the men's camps. It was strictly forbidden to look at the men. But what did that matter when any day, any minute, he might pass by?
The next morning, I made the gravest mistake of my entire imprisonment. In my shock and agitation, I forgot the first of all laws for prisoners of war. The man with the gun is always right. Attention! Hello. Hello. Hello, Johnny. How do you do, Mrs. Keith? How do you do, Colonel? How did you get those? I got those when I was attacked by one of your soldiers last night. What do you mean? I was attacked by one of the guards last night. Violently attacked. It wasn't in the way of punishment of any sort. It was attempted criminal assault. I can hardly believe this, Mrs. Kiss. Well, it's the truth. I know I'm a prisoner, but I believe I have the right to protest against such an experience. I believe I have the right to demand your protection. If another person had told me this, I wouldn't believe it. Come to camp headquarters at 10 o'clock. I want to talk to you about it. Thank you, sir. did it. Now we're in for it. It didn't happen to you. You don't know what it's like. Complaining won't undo it. You've still been mauled, but now the guards are going to be very angry and take it out on all of us. You can't win. You should know that by now. Green by soldier. You say hello. You say come here. No, I didn't. I never saw him until he grabbed me. You lie. Japanese not like white woman. You invite soldier. I'm not a young girl, Lieutenant, and I'm not flirtatious. Flirtatious. You're a kitschy guy. I did nothing whatever to attract this soldier. I don't even think he could see me in the dark. He attacked me because I was helpless and a prisoner. You know this soldier's face? No. I can't identify him if that's what you mean. It was too dark, I tell you. Too dark? Not even know if soldier then, huh? It was a soldier, all right. Not Chinese fellow from outside? Mo, mo, yi, mo, yi. I believe what you say, Mrs. Keys, and I'm very sorry it happened. I apologize to you for him. Thank you, Colonel. You may go now. Do you think that's the end of it? I don't think so. Just wait till the Colonel gets out of camp. Sugar? Sugar? Hey, Dono. Come on. I actually got Mrs. Kiss to Hana Shu Tai Sou Des. Yoshi, come on. Mrs. Kiss, come with me, please. Hey, Sugar. Look at this man. Now, which one? I told you I couldn't identify him. I haven't the faintest idea what he looked like. Not there, huh? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell if he were. Yes, ma'am. Wally, you come with me. Sit here. To make false charge against the Japanese soldier is to die. You know that? Yes. You want to die? No. Then why do you lie? I haven't lied. I've told you the truth, but I know there's nothing to be done about it. I can't identify the man, and I haven't any witnesses. I'm perfectly willing to drop the matter. Won't you let me do that? Very serious to make false charge against the Japanese soldier. The charge wasn't false. I'm sorry I made it, but the charge wasn't false. You sign this. No, no, no read. Just sign. Of course not. I can't sign anything I haven't read. You sign. Everything be okay. I'm sorry. I can't do that. Either I read it, 
or I can't sign it. Okay, read. Then sign. It is order. I say sign it. I won't do it. If I did, you'd have the right to kill me for falsely accusing a Japanese soldier. I won't do it. No, no. You sign. Nothing happened. No, I won't. Because it's not true. Oi. Scotty, tell me, Oscar. So, she's going to kill her. You sign now? No. You want more trouble? No. I... I won't sign away my life. Nani ka hoka ni kangae aru ka? Iye, tarai ma no toko no arimasen. All right then, that's all. You go now. But do not talk about this, you understand? I understand. Must not say anything about this. Very bad for you if you do. I won't talk. I promise. All right then. Get out. Agnes, did they beat you? No. What did they do? Nothing. Well, as long as they don't send for you again, you're probably all right. Oh, oh, please, darling. Oh, be, be very careful. I'm going to do your work for you tomorrow, Molly. Thank you, darling. I'll be all right in the morning. Is it all over now? I guess so. I'm glad, Mommy. Mrs. Keith? Report to Lieutenant Nakata in his office at 10 o'clock this morning. I'll be there. Can I do anything for you, dear? Sit here, Betty. Don't ask any question. I won't. If anything happens to me, will you do what you can for George? about Harry. I don't want to leave my little boy without somebody who's interested in him. He's still such a baby, you know. I'll take care of him, dear. Oh. There's probably nothing to it. I'm, I'm just being stupid. Well, 
could see. Now it's all well. You're all dressed up, Mommy. You look beautiful. Do I really, darling? Mommy can always depend on her big boy to say something nice. Where are you going? I'm going to headquarters to see somebody. Will you be back soon? I think so. Pretty soon. But if I'm late for supper, you go to Aunt Betty and she'll take care of you. Mommy, you're hurting me. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Mommy just loves you so much. What's the matter, Mommy? Nothing. I just felt like hugging you, that's all. You don't mind, do you? No, but you hug so hard. All right. We'll try it again, and this time I promise not to hurt you. Now you give me a kiss. Mommy, you promised. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Keith. Go in. They're waiting for you. Sit down. You think last night? Yes. You sign now, huh? No. Mrs. Keys. Are you all right? Oh, yes, thank you. I, I just felt a little weak for a moment. Mrs. Keys, very helpful to close case, sir. She's willing to drop the charge, I believe, and say nothing further about the matter. That's right. I am very pleased indeed. Green, feel better. Just suck it. And then on March 25th, 1945, at 10 minutes past 10 in the morning,
in their teeth. They will never come. Never, never, never. And they didn't. Not for months, not for centuries, it seemed. And now, of course, the rumors were even wilder and more terrifying. Did you hear about your husband? They're sending the men on the march. 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 Did you hear about your husband? They're sending me here to find out. Did you hear about your husband? They're sending me here to find out. Did you hear about your husband? How do you do, Mrs. Case? How do you do, Carol? Won't you be seated? Thank you. I hope you don't mind. I wanted to talk to you at least for a few moments. Of course. I feel that you understand. I am. I have no more family now. No. My hometown was bombed last weekend. They are all dead now. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Colonel. Where was it? Tokyo? No. We used to live in Tokyo. But after the Doolittle raid, Mrs. Suga worried so much about the children that last year I got the permission for them to move to Hiroshima. I wish there was something I could say to offer you some comfort, but I know there isn't. We had been married 15 years last month, and we had three of the dearest children you could imagine. Two boys and a girl. One of the boys, the youngest, was just a little younger than George. I remember you told me. Oh. You remember, really? Yes, you told me in Sandakan. He was a year younger, but he was almost as tall. I remember that, too. How old were the others? The oldest boy was just 12. Chocho, -cho, the little girl, was eight. She was not very pretty, I suppose, but she was a darling child, gentle and motherly. very strange to sit here and think that I will never see them again. Oh, I don't mean to burden you with my troubles when you have so many of your own, but I feel that of all the people here, you would be the one most likely to understand. I think I do, Colonel. Whatever the rest is, there's no difference in our hearts about our children. Thank you, Mrs. Kitts. Thank you very much for coming. Goodbye, sir.
What are you doing? Eating something. What is it? What does it say? Are you really so hungry? Yes, sir, but I'm not as hungry as I was, though. I am. I'm not. How would your children like to come with me to my house in Kuching and have a little party with the last to eat? Now? Why not? We'll have a little celebration together, just the four of us, shall we? Oh, boy, a picnic! George? He was with Susie a few minutes ago, and Colonel hey, Sugar. Hey, George! George! Was Colonel Sugar in that car? Colonel Sugar? Yes. Oh, dear God, no! Oh, no! Now, children, this is it. Go up the steps, George. Come on, Julie. You can start, Kaito. Ha, kashiko mare mashita. Come over there. Flowers. Oh, look at, look at them. Look at I'm going to take flowers. that one home for Johnny. I'm going to take that one. They're pretty. Mm, look at that red. Kurano no tsutsore kara biscuit nan ka takusan motte kure. Ha, kashiko mare mashita. Children, pick some if you wish. Thank you. Still hungry, George? Come on, dig in. It's all right. Eat all you want. It's all yours. last came the day, September 11th, 1945. And this was how it dawned, with a strange calm and quiet.
It's no use.